Welcome back to WordCamp Santa Clarita Valley in Greater Los Angeles. We were looking for Lesser Los Angeles, but we couldn't find it, so we put it in Greater Los Angeles. Uh, it is my privilege to introduce a phenomenal mover and shaker in the WordPress community for many years. Uh, Elizabeth Schilling has been a web developer for over 15 years, um, focusing on site performance, user experience, e-commerce, PHP and JavaScript. Um, and she's been working with WordPress for over 12 years, building plugins and becoming very deeply involved with the WordPress community, uh, especially as concerns the future of WordPress. So without further ado, I give you Elizabeth. Hi, welcome. Uh, I'm Elizabeth. Um, I'm very glad to be here and even more thankful that you're here to join us here today with the quarantine and we're finding our new normal. But I'm here to talk to you today about block building. I do have some slides if you'd like to uh, connect with those. They're on the um, econstantcontent.com block underscore building. And this is uh, my first time speaking. So I've been to many uh, word camps and volunteering, but this is actually my first time speaking and I'm very uh, glad to be able to do so. So this is a developer focused talk. We are gonna go over the code and, uh, and it's for plugin developers, themers, anyone who's interested in delving into how to get blocks built and talking about also like a bit of future with Gutenberg because we are about phase two of it with it. Um, and with that, when, um, when my brother was in fourth grade, and we moved to Orange County for the first time, I was uh, six years younger than him. And we went to his open house, which is in the September back to school, actually back to school. And we go to the uh, auditorium of the whole family, all, all the schools is there. And, and uh, we're getting ready to hear the principal and my sister's there too, nine years older than me. And the person is up on the stage and are just, see, just talking to the audience and getting them welcomed. And they ask for volunteers to tell jokes. And so um, I realized I was at, been a preschool practicing jokes brought in by my family at home. I was ready, I was like, I, I could do this. So I, I raised my hand and I was one of the youngest people up there and there were six of us. And when he took in person, they said my joke. And so I had one person before me and I just, I wasn't quite sure of what to say. And um, so I said, okay, well, I'll make a joke up. So I, I, one person was telling a joke and then it comes to me. And so I say, how do you make Santa Claus dead? And it was just really bizarre. And the whole started to laugh and the, uh, Commencer repeated it and and uh, the whole audience was it, it went over well. And, and so basically, if someone takes your, someone says your joke, well, create, create a new one. And it, with Gutenberg, the what is available is so vast. So if for some reason you feel like Oh, they said my joke, or they said they they said what I'm doing, or or they're going to do what I'm doing. There's so much more that can be done. Uh, so many more genres. I mean, such like in the jokes, how many different types of jokes there are, and with Gutenberg, like we're at the very beginning stages of it for the most part, and the potential and possibilities of what can be done with it are are immense. And uh, also to to um just encourage you to really try and give it a, a chance if you haven't. Um, I believe probably since you're here, you're probably really on board with Gutenberg. But uh, so what I'm gonna do today is take you through just basically how to get started with building blocks. I talked a little bit about the um, potentials and we'll talk more about that. Uh, just briefly, just to show you the history of programming and how it's changed. Why, why would, again, like why would we do this when we have WordPress working and so many users, why would we 
want to try something different. And I just want to show you, sorry, I'm shaking a little. Um, the changes, this is about a minute. So you could see the top, the top ended up being Python because all the data, the data drive there of, of, of our intelligent and data driven, and then also JavaScript right there. So you can see how things fluctuate and change, and that is part of the reason why we were going to be going into JavaScript because it's such, it's such a usable base of code, and it creates so much potential of what you can do with your sites. So let me go into the next slide. And we're going to be covering block API, basic block, JS next block, Redux, Redux, and some hooks and a little bit dynamic and more. What we have is block patterns, which have been briefly touched on. And uh, we're going in more in like what, what we're working on in development. And so if you want to see the most recent of what Gutenberg does now uh, in the editor with the most recent version of WordPress and then with the uh, download the Gutenberg plugin, and you're able to see what can be done right now and then developing in what is uh, with the core and what we're, what they're working on for bringing it into for the next phase. So phase two is full block editing. So right, the way Alicia presented was right on spot on. Moving forward, there is going to be full site editing. And what that means, it could mean many things. And that's why we really would like you to get involved if you have interest. But the block patterns are almost like a, it was a, like, basically a web page with mainly HTML where it will, we're developing it, it's being developed, but it's gonna be uh, not quite a template, but more like a web page. And then the blocks will be fit in the web page. So when you have those theme uh, sample demos of the theme and somebody goes to um, choose that theme and they want it to look like that theme, they'll be choosing those block patterns and dropping them in and start with something that looks like that theme. That's the excitement of, of it. That's the core of it is that it brings that much capability to the user and you're able to give that to them. Um, reusable blocks are basically blocks that you make and then you can use them again. And uh, you, can, you can use different, um, like I believe people are using Blocks right now for them. You can do it that way, and then you connect them into one block, or you can use code and you will be bringing blocks together. So you have an image, text, and uh, you got other things as well. There will be um, you can choose which blocks you have options, which you allow in the blocks, and which you don't. And then there's inner blocks, which give you the dynamic data, more of the content if you want to. Uh, change the content more of within the block. Uh, with, we'll be talking more about that as well. So getting started, this is a little bit of a jump. If you are starting with a block, you're very it's, you're very welcome to just you know, copy the files of a of a simple block and work with that, make some changes see what it does and to get familiar with it that way, read the documentation. But with the other way is uh, it's encouraged to use Node in the sense that you install Node, uh, the nodejs.org download, 
install that on your computer. Give yourself some time because you might run into a little bit of a hiccup, but just like uh, when you're downloading in and then um, the next step that could be a little bit of leap is opening up command line and using command line. Uh, command line is very powerful. It's really good to know once you start using it, you'll like it for the most part, I think. Um, so you wanna be sure to spell things correctly and make your backups because uh, you, if something does go wrong, you could wipe your site out with one command. If it, I'm not, we're not gonna do that, but you just wanna make your backups for your files in your database first until you get comfortable. And then also a lot of times with this, you'll be working in your local host, local hosting environment, I encourage you to work in your local host. So, and then with a new site would be even better because then if something like that happens, you would be a new site, so you just start, start again. But basically you're going to use CD and that just moves your, your files up and down. So if you wanna go up a file, up a directory, um, SAT dots to go up and then um, CD into the file, the folder, the directory. And we're going to CD, so I CD into WordPress and then um, I go into, I wanna see what's there. So I, in um, Windows it's dir, in Mac it's li. So you just type that right here and then you um, will get a listing of the files, the folders and files that are in that directory. So I'm in the WP directory, so this should look familiar. And then next step, um, open CLI in the plugin, or, or I just repeat a little CLI, CD into the plugins folder. So this is just going down with CD into the plugins folder. And then this is from Gregor Zavalski. He created the block block scaffolding, which is really nice. And so what this might look like a lot, but basically, this is dropping the plug, this is just a little bit of the part. This is the part that you type, it's right here. This is where you use the NPM. It's NPM init at WordPress slash block dash dash template ES5 and then the name, the getting started is what I named it. And you can name it, that's your choice, what you do there. Then you just press return and all this gets started. This happens, you've watched this on the screen and you are left with these directories. So then um, you want to get an IDE if you don't have one already. This is um, VS Code. Uh, some people use PHP Storm. You probably have something that you use already, but if not, these are very good. A lot of people are using VS Code, and I and PHP Storm is also another. Uh, so yeah, so if you're able to get familiar with or to download Node and have an IDE and get familiar with that, then you're ready. You're ready to really start going with the. Um, building the blocks. And what this gives you right here is what we just made. So in the, this is in the plugin folder, this is where a plugin uh, getting started is what we called it. And then this is the getting started PHP uh, file. So we in, in, in it here, initialize it here in the directory. Um, excuse me, if you have the index, this is um, to NQ register. Um, For the different scripts, the editor, the CSS, and the index.js. Um, continuing through the index.js, you have the register block type, and here's the getting started here. And then the rest of this is, is uh, included in the install here, but you can change the description. You can pick what category you're gonna have your block in on the block editor, and you can choose what uh, icon you're gonna have for the, in the dash cons you can choose, or if you really want to, you can download your own. We have the edit section for the back end, and it saves to the to the to the back end, and then what you get when you save the content. Um, 
name of that. Now this is a basic block, so this doesn't have the ES6. But what we have is we go to the plugin editor and you activate it. So for the ES6 and the JSX, which is the newer type of JavaScript, and you want to be able to use that when you want when you're ready to use that, then you want to go ahead and use it's the same, very same set of similar setup. It's the CD into the plugins folder. And there's two uh, into the WordPress. I'm in the WordPress there. I do Dirk, so I just want to see okay what's in there. And then I go CD into plugins. And while I'm in my plugins folder, I do npm init at WordPress slash block. And that's it because it defaults to this. So similar to the first one, but it defaults. So you don't need to put the rest. It's even a little simpler than the first one. Uh, you're going to have options that you can choose from. And so you can choose, uh, let's see, of course, the name of it. They're going to have a namespace. Titles, I just use the same. The description, uh, this is what defaulted. So there are defaults that you can use or you can change it. Is palm tree and, and the formatting for where it's at in the category. And then uh, just uh, who wrote it, version, GPL, and license. See, as you see, you can change that. Um, all editable, editable. If you have something in here that you don't like, you can change it later. So no worries there. Um, you press enter at that return at that point. And then these the packages, the JSON package gets created. And that's basically what part of those. Excuse me. That's what's nice about this package. And it includes um, um, Webpack and Babel. Once you have that, uh, this is this stuff you don't type. It, this is just happens on the screen, and these are different commands that are presented here. And so, start is important. So you're going to uh, go down to where it stops. So you're going to cd. This is where it stops. Or we actually right here. I actually just made it a spelling. So it is forgiving. Uh, I wrote ex next on by mistake, and then. Uh, it was really supposed to be ES, ES next. So it has a little like, oh, can't find it. Oh, okay. And then you see, and I see, oh, okay, I didn't spell it right. So CD ES next. So it is, again, just to show it is a little forgiving. And then it, uh, now I'm in my, I'm in that folder. So now I'm in that plugin folder and I'm going to do EMPM start so that I can, basically, so it can build <laughs> the files for me. Uh, and then it builds. It does the build, and this builds out the the programs and the, the what's in the uh, JSON file package JSON. Uh, here's the uh, PHP next file or, or ES next.php file. It's very similar to the other file in that it has the uh, the choices that we put on the front. Let's see here, let me read what we have here. Oh, actually, sorry, this is PHP, so we're in queuing. The, the the CSS and the JS and and the register block types are registering. Sorry, I got to help myself with the uh, with JS. But this is the um, this is actually the registering of the of the blocks and the JS. Here we are. So in the JS, here's basically like what we what we entered in. So on the index JS, so we have the title ES next uh, word count Santa Clarita Valley. And there's our, our namespace. We have our description, which we can even change here. You're not stuck with that. Uh, we have format, it's gonna be in the formatting category, palm tree, and these and supports here to choose. Now, there's more of the index here. I edit and return. These are very basic. This is just to start, just a starter, as in the other one, just a starter. And this is our package JSON. So this is the different one of the differences right here. So this helps go from ES6 to ES5. It helps with the browsers to read our code once we put it out into the wild and develop. Um, then we go into the editor and we go ahead and activate it. We will now see it in 
our block. So now we created this ES Next Ready JavaScript plugin for us to put what we would like to have in it. And this is the editor side. And then once you save that on the page side, you have the ES Next or Camp Center code. Santa Clara Valley, hello from save content. So this is save content. Not much going on there, but again, it's just a, uh, just a starter. So now we have the ability to go in and create. Uh, we're gonna look at some dynamic. This is a, actually a sample. So I grabbed a tutorial. I tend to like videos and things. I, I mean, I have done some dynamic blocks, but not necessarily in Gutenberg, by using Ajax and um, and, uh, and uh, filters and uh, hooks, hooks filters and uh, sorry, I'm a little nervous here, but uh, creating those types of blocks without the editor, with the Ajax, with we're just going through uh, the actual content, which was a full block of. HTML, so it was very well, all kinds of things. So you'd have to go through that to get what you want and to take it out, like say an image, and you want to put something underneath the image. You have to find that image. You have to see if there's images there. You have to like, you know, get the ID. Uh, you have to um, find where it is position wise. And it was a lot of work. So with blocks, it takes a lot of that out because you're working now with sections, it's sectioned out. And that's done now with the editor. So that that was one of the great improvement. I find it to be an improvement of making it easier to work with the edit, with the editor. I, so in this example, this is categories. So this is our JS blocks. So sorry, with the. Um, this is a different uh, block. So not the one that we just made. This one is uh, post cat for the name. This is the folder, and these are the. Files. It is a little bit of a different scaffolding, but very similar. And then um, we have the code here of the different attributes. So you'll be putting attributes. And again, I followed a tutorial to just kind of help me out with the detailing to get more of what's going on here with Gutenberg for to start out with. I recommend, or however it is that you prefer books. Or which you prefer, or which you had ever, or documentation. And so you have the um, categories. This is going to be what you see in the editor when you save it. To show the difference, what makes it dynamic and also inner blocks is, or dynamic blocks, you're going to return null. Inner blocks is similar, but it's um, block, it's a save it inner block, but we're making a dynamic block right now with. The traditional dynamic blocks. And so then you're going to go into your PHP. Now, this is also where um, registering your styles, your localized script. But then uh, the part that I want to show you is your dynamic uh, code. And what makes this dynamic is that you've this selected category depends on what category is selected. Depending on what category is selected, then it will show that actually post per page, the post, the most latest category. Uh, let me see right here is what I'm looking at. And the most latest uh, image in the expert of the post. So this will give you um, the latest. Then you go and you, um, Go ahead and activate it. And on the other side, you have your categories. So you're making, you have your categories that you, you chose to have to show and you should have your post per page. And this one shows, this one you're making the editing here as to what you want. And it's supposed to be, um, so you have, uh, here's the holiday activities right there, put the category there to see it. And then you have the, um, title and the image and you have the excerpt and there should be one more and here's one more you have the title and the reason why there's two is this is a different uh just a split of a slide and then here's the holiday 
holiday activities, the image and the excerpt. And that is created with dynamic content. So when you add another uh, post for holiday activities, then that will be the post that shows up for here. And then this will be pushed down because you're showing your first two, because that's what you have selected. So that is a way to change over for your, your dynamic posts that you, your dynamic uh, plugins that you might be having WordPress and you want to be able to switch them over. Uh, that's just the very beginnings in that. Uh, there's also another category of global variables that are being talked about and the power of the global variables and what they'll do for the Gutenberg editor for WordPress is, is very powerful. I don't know exactly how it's going to be, uh, but it works. I you have uh, so this is a, a, a post a custom field, and you want to say you want to take a color from a button value. Um, so this is this is making the the field attached to the media uploader for images, and say I want to. I want that to be a variable. So I don't know what it's going to be until somebody chooses it. So this is where the, the, the variable comes in, which in this case is like a CSS variable, it's similar. Um, you get the post meta and if it's there, if it's blank, then they're going to have a blank value. If uh, else you're going to get the value that it is and have it be that value. And that will show up in your custom field where they're going to enter in their field shows up and then they're able to change it or keep it that way if they have if you haven't put anything there then it'll be blank um, then what it does is it can this is just one way i'm not saying this is how this is how it's going to be but just to get an idea then when you're it, it can be pulled through because you have this get post meta and i'm gonna say we're using get post meta but it's just a sample uh, so if you have the id and the image and the the um variable then you can get the value and then you can see the color codes um, so that becomes purple then we have another one size of uh, darker purple and then a green and a light green and an orange it's different um, a different very or different uh, properties and so when you bring them down into your code you're calling them in and it picks those up. And the thing is you can you have that out global and you can go through your whole site quite easily. And that's the the power of it. And the thing is they're variables. So you can set it at a very high level, but then also go in and change it at the at the inline level if you need if you really want to. If you just love power. Um, just a little bit of history of me of how I got into that um, just using uh, back a while back uh, with iframes working with SAS and installing uh, the capture after using uh, after installing on very many other different sites without the frame uh, we had client IDs to identify which which caption was whose but installing on every site without the little iframe and we were doing SEO, but it's just a little piece of it, of the site. So it didn't hurt the SEO in the sense because there was a lot more going on around it. Um, so this, this uh, some clients want to change it. So it's an iframe. How do you get into the, the CSS and how do you get to the values, any values? And so we would, uh, I would uh, have the variables so that you have the PHP echo for the, variable, this is a CSS property. And then in the uh, domain, in the URL, it passed the variable. So that would be, if you're doing something like that already, then you can see relate to, to what they're we're working on, what they're working on in Gutenberg with the global variables and how, how much of a benefit that can be to Gutenberg and editing. Let me just check on time real quick.
You've got about 18 minutes. Okay, thank you. So Redux, that was a lot. That was a lot of information. Um, I hope it's making sense. I, it's not having an audience. Um, I'm not really able to check in, but I know it's lots. So, so far, basically we covered, we covered how to start a basic block and then how to get into the um, ES6 uh, blocks so that you can get into the modern JavaScript. Uh, using the modern Java, JavaScript, it, it takes you into um, Redux, React Redux. So when I was doing at sometimes what makes me really interested in the JavaScript for using it this way is say on your on the front of your page, you want to um, just have something change without the page changing. So for for me, it's something like when they click the button, I want a thank you, a thank you to come up in a box where the form was or where or where the object was. And so um, that could be done with Ajax. And you can use Ajax for quite a bit. Um, but the Redux, what that does is if you want to do even more manipulation. Uh, so on my other one, I had an application that was similar to Instagram because I see Brown and built some Instagram APIs with that. And so I wanted to take some of that into the, I was trying to move it into WordPress with the gallery, and, or not gallery, excuse me, on a, all your pages where the images are to do a like button. And what I found is I was having really trouble uh, having the extra changes of the state. And so something like Redux would help. Um, and I'll show you an example that was with, now they also have a library that uses, hook, or uses um, functions. So or hooks, right, and functions. Whereas, okay, Redux, Redux is basically classes. So with classes uh, in Redux, you uh, are managing state, and it has to be managed in a somewhat of a, a complex way. It's very powerful, though. So once you get something set up and you learn it, you can build very uh, very powerful applications. So it is it is something worth worth learning, especially if you're gonna, if you wanna go toward the applications. And remember, what you build in Gutenberg goes to mobile. So when you're building this out, it will be available in, in uh, the phone as well as desktop, which is a nice, a nice feature because everybody is mobile. Um, so even working on their, the WordPress site and can be mobile. Um, here, I just I don't want to go into too much detail because quite you know I'm learning I'm getting more familiar with Redux. I haven't I'm more of a, I like the hooks. Uh, I do I do want to learn this more myself. Uh, the state has to be at the top level to move it into the, sorry to move it into the view. Uh, and then uh, you could it moves downward and then over action through the store the state again to go to the reducer which is basically the function with the original value to create a new a new one so the other one never changes you can't once you create a state it doesn't change so that's why there's it's kind of a of much of a flow but if you're used to forms forms are a good way to get kind of familiar with the way moving data around uh, you can know you're used to having uh, things working in the background. So these are where your functions are. So you end up with different um, directories and different uh, files for the different reducers. Usually there's one store uh, and a view and then a couple actions depending on what you're going to be doing. And the, uh, oh, I didn't talk about the packages. So we're another reason Another nice thing about using is uh, using Gutenberg is there are a lot of these packages. And so if you're going to be, I would say check them out if you get a chance to just kind of look through what's available. This is GitHub, WordPress, Gutenberg. Uh, I usually just type that packages and then that choose what comes up in Google. But um, 
to, to open this. And you want to look at the data package. If you want to see, like, if what if you want to see the components which are available with your Gutenberg, you can look at components and the other blocks are here too. Um, block editor, uh, let's see, quite a few actually. Um, I'm not gonna go through all of them, of course, element. And then um, you choose, I mean, there's just the buttons and things of that, all that type of thing within the, the, the folders, within the packages, I should say. So these are all the different packages. So definitely check those out. There are wealth, wealth of information, knowledge, and then of course the documentation in WordPress and uh, to going with building. Um, it was mentioned the the uh, the React Dev tools and your Dev. I think it was Dev tools. Is you, you want to include your React Dev tools so you can see when you're making changes to your app, you can see it what your browser is doing, and with the uh, in this case with the React, just putting the, T, the TJ in there. And this is pulling uh, the GitHub users state username. Yeah, this, it pulls, once you put TJ in there, then it shows you over here, all this information about TJ that you have now access to from setting this up. So, and that is, now I'm wondering if it's class or I believe it's class. So, okay. Hey, Elizabeth. Yes. We're getting close. We have about two minutes. And if you'd like to answer a couple of small questions, I've got a couple of small questions from your really? okay. adoring um, audience. You have an adoring audience out here. Thank you so much because I I really appreciate that. It's, I, this is good stuff, but I, uh, I'm not quite sure how it's coming across. So I thank you. Um, you you'll see when you read the comments afterwards that uh, uh, you're, you're you're rocking, they say. Oh, thank you. That's very, that's very kind. Very kind. <laughs> uh, so React Hooks, this is really fun. This is really great, actually. Uh, this, again, this is using the advanced JavaScript, so the J86 JavaScript. But look, check this out. And I, there, uh, Travis C, I think Travis C is the uh, company. I can't take credit for this, but I'm going to put this in the WordPress. Like, this is my next uh, little project just to, just to mess with things. I have other things, but this is like one of my... Uh, things I want to do too, uh, just to get used to this. Because so you add the transaction, it's not working right now, it's just a screenshot. But these, uh, you add here the import 2000. If it's negative, it minuses it. If it's positive, and then it changes right here on the moment once you press add transaction. So it has an add transaction and a, and a minus transaction in a sense. It has colors here. So the, uh, the green is for what's positive and then red if it's negative, which I didn't show. And you can actually remove them too. So you can click on it and remove it. So that's pretty awesome. I'm like, that's what I'm talking about. Like not just a like, but even more, you know? And I like about this is that it is uh, functions. It's hooks, uh, React hooks. And so here's just a sample. I just, I didn't do too much. Here's the app.js page. So these are the, you can see this is the, this is the file, this is expense tracker react. So this, I didn't put it a box, but this is actually the whole program here. And so that's why I didn't box it. These are the components. And then we have the reduce, we do have a reducer. So we're using context, global state, it's so sweet. It's really nice. Um, it's not my- Hey, um, I'm sorry, yeah. Elizabeth, we're getting down to the wire here. Um, we're going to have to move along to any 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 couple of questions that you may want to answer. Okay, so um, let me um, go here, and so I can see. Okay, yes, sorry, thank you. That's all right. Um, Alicia Saint Rose asked, um, "Can you build custom blocks with custom fields and use any field in them?" Yes, yes, absolutely. Uh, many people like Alicia. Alicia's doing it the right way. I mean, amazing what she's doing. Uh, using uh, you can use advanced custom fields, and then also we um, you can make your own as well. Roll your own, definitely. Nice. Um, Scott Damon wants to know: Can can't you just set up a dev server with Node.js and develop your own blocks there? I, he would rather not trash his home computer environment. He wants to set up Node Jack, Node where? On a separate machine, basically, so he doesn't trash his home. home yeah, computer. yeah, you don't have to set it up on your home computer and whatever where you have access, where it's okay for you to to write your programs at on um, which machine you have access to, and it's okay with them, definitely. 
And then uh, Danny Long wants to know, um, is there an advantage to using ECMAScript 5 versus 6 or 6 versus 5? Yes, uh, the newer the newer JavaScript is with the SSScript six, so you have a different way of writing functions, which are actually very nice. I mean, in the sense that you don't have it's just very condensed and very easier to read. Once you get used to it, you just see it better. I mean, just drops if it drops function. Why do you really have to call the function? You know, oh, nice. uh, yeah, and arrow arrow functions and other things as well. So okay. definitely hooks. And, uh, Last question. Last question. I'm sorry to rush you. No. Um, Amy wants to know uh, where are the great tutorials for these for this these days. Well, if you're talking about my samples, uh, I usually just YouTube. There are really good, I, I really good tutorials there. Uh, I usually do so a lot of times it's out of WordPress. It's in React. I do React, Redux, Redux React. Uh, I, I definitely look at WordPress. Uh, that other one was Andy or uh, Young, so Alex Young, and very hey. good. A lot of options there. Um, well, that's going to have to wrap it up. I'm afraid um, it's too much fun. I know we got we could stay all afternoon. <laughs> yes, and WordPress.tv. Uh, there's the blocks, the talks, block talks they just did, which is excellent resource as well. And this will be on there as well. Oh, I think. Yeah, this will be on Word, WordPress.tv. All of all of WordCamp today it will be over there fairly soon, sooner than usual, I think. And um, anyway, so. Let's have a big hand, everyone, for Elizabeth Schilling. Thank you so much for coming, Elizabeth. It's a fabulous discussion. Thank you.